Now, you may be asking yourself, does Coyote Peterson always have a tiny turtle in his pocket? Well, not always, but today, we're gonna talk about the differences between the turtle and the tortoise. Say hello to Buckshot. Turtles, turtles, turtles. For nearly 200 million years, a reptile we all know as the turtle has inhabited our planet. These cold-blooded ectotherms are protected by a hard bony shell. They breathe air and eat their food using a beak. Of the 327 known species that exist today, some live in water, while others can be found on land. Since childhood, I have been fascinated by these seemingly slow-moving creatures. Yet to many people's surprise, they are actually quite speedy, especially when in the water. But what about the land-dwelling, stumpy-footed, slow-moving reptile that somehow defeated that speedy rabbit? Yes, I am talking about the tortoise, and the one question people are always asking. Is a tortoise a turtle, or is a turtle a tortoise? Well, there is an answer to that question. And to help us get to the bottom of this timeless mystery, we are going to get the cameras up close to one of the largest species in the world. Okay, I hope everybody out there watching is excited because right here in this bag, I've got a bunch of vegetables. You guys know the vegetables are good for you, right? Coyote, I don't think anybody's gonna get excited about uh, vegetables, man. Well, maybe you're not excited about the vegetables, but you should be excited about who is going to eat these vegetables. You guys ready to see a giant tortoise? How big is this tortoise? I mean, oh. is, he brought a lot. Is, there gonna, is it gonna eat all that? Oh, it's gonna eat all of it. We're probably gonna run out of food before we're done filming the segment. Really? If you guys are ready, let's go meet Buckshot. Buckshot, Come I on. like that name. Oh yeah, she's my buddy. There you are. Oh my goodness. Hi, Buckshot. This is the Galapagos tortoise, the largest tortoise species in the world. And what we're gonna do today is feed her her dinner. Okay, uh, Buckshot, hey, well, where are you going? All the food's over here. Right. First bite. Oh, there's a big tortoise poop. Did you step in that? I may have stepped on the tortoise. Oh, did I do it? Oh, I might have done it. Oh, it's on, oh. My, it's on my food. Oh, man, dude. Oh, oh <laughs> Mark stepped in the tortoise poop. Oh, is it this foot, too? Nope. It's just, just that, that side. One. Oh, All right, gosh. Buckshot, come this way away from the poop. Come on, Buckshot. There we go. Now, one very distinct thing about tortoises and turtles is the length of that neck and she's holding up the entire weight of her body and stretching out her neck. And they would do this in the wild to forge for mm. plants that were higher up. She could pull down yeah. fruits and berries. Cool. <laughs> look Listen at to the, those chompers. Look at the chomp of that beak. Now, I'm trying to pay attention to where your camera's at, Mark, but I also have to pay attention to her beak. Because you see when she bites out, she bites and lunges her head forward. And I do not want to lose a finger in that beak. Ooh, that's a little close there. Oh. We are in South Florida right now, and this is one of the only Galapagos tortoises in captivity here in this area. We are given the opportunity to film with her. Now, she is 25 years old, and she weighs 140 pounds. She actually just almost bit my nose right there. No, my nose is not romaine lettuce, and she is an absolute giant. This tortoise weighs just about as much as I do. I weigh 155 pounds, so this creature is absolutely massive. And oh boy, she's like about to step on top of my leg. Oh, watch this, this is cool. Watch how high she can bounce up her 140 pound body. Can you see that? It's I can't like even a, get it all in the frame. Wow. It's like a brachiosaur eating leaves at the top of a tree. Now the Galapagos tortoise is an herbivore and they get a large percentage of their moisture through the food that they eat. And you can see how juicy, ooh, getting close to my fingers. Okay, we're moving on to the next piece. And you can see how juicy a lot of these vegetables are. Oh, here's something. Look at this, oh, look at that. Look at that, ah, ah. Look at that, she's standing on my leg. She is like squishing my ankle. Ha, ah, I never thought I would be feeding a Galapagos tortoise. I hope that one day we can end up on Galapagos Island, one of the islands. Oh, that's better. 
No, she's not actually on my ankle. And feed some of these tortoises in the wild. How about the cucumber? Let's have some cucumber. That is my personal favorite. There you go. You know what you should do, a lady and a tramp? With the cucumber? Yeah. <laughs> Put one in in your mouth. Ready? Yeah, for a while. <laughs> oh, she's standing on me, ready? Oh. Keep going, one more bite. Uh-uh, it's too close yeah, to my no, nose. No, 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 it'll be fine. Oh, too, too close. If she gets my nose, it's... Oh, is there any more cucumber back? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I get my finger stuck in that beak, it is going to be game over. She could easily snip off the tip of my finger. Ow! Ow! Oh, she crushed my shin. Oh, she did. Maybe she's after these. At 25 years old, she is only about a fifth of the size. Now, at 140 pounds, they can grow to be close to 1,000 pounds. Imagine wow. something that is five times this size. Look, this is me hugging a tortoise. Oh! Uh, let me see if I can hear her heartbeat. No, nothing inside of that solid bone carapace. Wow, I am in just such awe of this creature. Like, it is massive, can you believe this? And this is rare, like, there, there's not like a Galapagos tortoise in, you know, every street corner. No, uh, many zoos do have Galapagos tortoises, but they're actually really hard to take care of in captivity. So this is a very unique situation for us to be able to get up close with this animal. And like I said, I would love to be on the island of Galapagos someday, filming these creatures in the wild, but we certainly weren't going to pass up the opportunity to get this one up close for the cameras. So, Coyote, I have a question. So we keep talking mm -hmm. about uh, turtles and tortoises, and I'm a little confused. What separates a tortoise from a turtle? Great question. Technically, all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. Think about that for a second. Kind of crazy, right? Bit of a brain scrambler. Let's look at the body structure of the tortoise, and that's what will help us distinguish this as being separate from a lot of the aquatic turtles that we're used to getting up close to, right? You want to yeah, do that? Let's do that. Okay, where do you want to start? Um, let's talk about size. Size, yes. Massive size. Now, tortoises are large because they constantly are feeding, right? All this animal does on a daily basis is crawl out into the sun, heat up for a couple of hours, and then it forages all day long. So the more it eats, the larger it grows. And look at the rugged body structure, right? Many tortoise species live in rugged environments, which has allowed them to adapt to a body structure like this. Their skin is like leather. Feels just like an old catcher's mitt. Come on, put your hand out there and feel that. Kind of feels like an, a rhino or an elephant skin. Right? And it's interesting that you mentioned elephant skin because look at the leg structure, okay? Both the front legs, no webbing on the feet, just these big gnarly paws and these stumped claws. And then the back feet specifically. Here, come back here and look at this. Let me get her to put her, her foot down. Looks just like, whoop, 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 don't want to scare. Looks just, just like, like an elephant foot. Yeah, and that's called elephantine leg structure. And when she lifts her body up, whoa, careful, yeah. Little, oh, she's a little tight. Yeah, look at Very that. Very sensitive for a big turtle. Look, look how big her paw is next to my hand. I don't want to keep that there too long because if she does step down on my fingers, she can crush them. That's a bit of a risky position to be in. But you see that? They do have claws, and just like turtles, they lay eggs. Now let's look at the shell structure. As compared to a turtle, a tortoise has a much more domed shell structure, right? Turtles are streamlined. They have narrower shells that allow them to quickly move through the water. A tortoise doesn't go in the water. A tortoise just needs to be able to traverse over land. Wow, so it sounds like tortoises are specialized. Yes. For living on land. So is that the big difference? That is, I would say, the biggest difference between most turtle species and tortoises is that tortoises are specialized for living on land. Now, you do have some land turtle species, like the box turtle and the wood turtle, two of my favorites that live in the United States. However, tortoises, you'll never find them in the water, right? You're never going to come across a pond and say, oh, there's a tortoise swimming around. Now, a tortoise may crawl into a puddle of water to drink and to cool itself off, but you'll never find them swimming. They're just kind of like, kind of submerged through like a giant tank. Is she full? Nope. Oh, she's never full. Well, I would definitely say that we learned a lot today. 
and that technically all tortoises are turtles. The thing that distinguishes a tortoise as a tortoise is that it is adapted for a life on land. And I can tell you this much, you never want to bring a tortoise to a salad buffet. I think they could wipe out a salad bar in about 20 minutes. Oh yeah, especially the Galapagos tortoise. See you later, Buckshot. The turtle is an evolutionary phenomenon that has fascinated both children and adults since the dawn of mankind. And whether you think they are adorable or scary, slimy or scaly, I think there are two things we can all certainly agree upon. Turtles are one of the most unique animals on the planet. And I like turtles. Over the course of my life, I have successfully caught and released over 500 snapping turtles. And my goal with each and every encounter is not to be bitten. These turtles are incredibly powerful, and their razor-sharp jaws are capable of cutting through human flesh like a hot knife through butter. Ah! It's fair to say that I have had some close calls. I have also taken some intentional bites to show you just how bad a bite can truly be. Ah! Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 He's ripping this out of my hand! Oh my gosh! And as we are all aware, ah! there have also been some pretty painful and gruesome unintentional bites. No matter how careful you are, or how experienced you may be, accidents in the heat of action do occasionally happen. Get ready to witness the worst snapping turtle bite I have ever taken. Oh, if you're squeamish, I will warn you now, there will be blood. Okay, got another turtle right around me. Okay, um, trying not to get bitten by another turtle. I got a turtle underneath me right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Huge turtle underneath my foot, huge turtle in hand. Okay, this is definitely, definitely a dangerous scenario right here. Well, it is another beautifully sunny day here in Columbus, Ohio, and we are out searching for snapping turtles. I'm back at Black Lick Woods, Ashton Pond, where some of the largest turtles in the state currently reside. You guys know the turtle I'm looking for. Maybe you remember a little episode where I caught Stumpbeak. This is where he lives, and right now I've been scouting with the binoculars and have seen several turtles moving about. Some on the back side of the pond and some over here. Which one of them is Stumpbeak? I'm not sure yet, but with any luck, we're gonna catch him and weigh him again and see if he is crested close to 60 pounds in weight. Now this is gonna be a very difficult scenario for me because I'm gonna to have to go out on the kayak and be extremely stealthy. These turtles are very much in tune with their environment and the second that they hear somebody trudging through, they immediately dive down into the murky abyss. So, me walking along the edges of this pond, not possible. Me in a kayak sneaking up in stealth mode, with any luck, we're gonna land ourselves a giant. Black Lick Woods is home to some very large dragons, including the infamous stump beak. I was originally introduced to this turtle by wildlife photographer Carl Hassel, who captured photographic evidence of this giant reptile several years ago. During the first season of Dragon Tales, I managed to land the beast, and he tipped the scales at 54 pounds. So I'm curious to learn how much he has grown in three years. There he is. Right back there underneath that log, I see Stumpy. He is actually moving into the shallows, likely claiming dominance of that territory. And again, right now it's breeding season, guys, so these snapping turtles are duking it out, dragon power, fighting each other for the rights to breeding territory. And the giant has just moved back into that corner. Okay, let's get in the kayak. I gotta catch him now. If I could land this behemoth for a second time, there was a chance he could become the living world record for a wild-caught common snapping turtle. The record currently hails at 76.5 pounds and dates back to the year 1988. Could this turtle, who we all know as Stumpbeak, have gained 23 pounds in three years? Look at how massive this turtle is. Only a successful catch would tell. I'm halfway through the pond right now. I could just see the carapace breached on the other side of that log. Okay, we're gonna sneak in real quiet here. Okay, he hasn't heard me yet. Guys, this could be Stumpy.
There he is. There he is. Big turtle, big turtle, big turtle. Nice. Okay, I got another turtle right around me. Try not to get bitten by another turtle. I got a turtle underneath me right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Huge turtle underneath my foot. Huge turtle in hand. Okay, this is definitely, definitely a dangerous scenario right here. Got him! I see that. Or one, and there goes my boat. Not good. I have another huge turtle underneath my foot as well. Double dragon scenario here, part two. Hold on. Ow. Took a bite, took a bite. Bad bite. Wrong end of the turtle, hold on. All right, gonna need some assistance. We'll go around. Ah. Shoot, I really wanna get this turtle too. All right, I'm abandoning that turtle and we're going in towards shore. You gotta know when you've gone far enough. Okay. You're right. <clears throat> wow, that is a giant right there. Man, I got a lot of blood coming out of my hand right now. Turtle took off the top of my finger. Most dangerous thing you can ever do is reach your finger down into the water after a turtle. All right, this is gonna need some first aid. We're gonna bring this turtle around and get him up close. <sighs> we got ourselves oh, a giant right. here. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. That's a big turtle. Unfortunately, it is not Stumpbeak. It's just another one of the giants that lives here at Ashton Pond. Oh boy. It may have been Stumpbeak underwater. I reached down, tried to get myself into a double dragon scenario, and it took the top of my finger off. As you can see, it is just the tip hanging on. Okay, let's get up there, let's get my finger wrapped, and let's get the rest of this scene. Woo! Man, I lost my boat. Woo! Well, I literally jumped into the middle of a snapping turtle fight. Two giants battling it out. I didn't realize there were two there until I was up on top of the log and jumped in, and this was the first one I could grab. And I thought, okay, well, I gotta get this turtle at least away from my legs. So I reached down, hoping to feel for the top of the carapace, and unfortunately, my finger went down just off the side. It turned its head and got my whole finger in its mouth. Uh, it's probably worse than it looks, or maybe not as bad as it looks. I don't know which, but when I looked at it, when it initially came up, the whole side of my finger is chomped off. You can see the blood coagulating there. And this is exactly why we need to respect snapping turtles from a safe distance, guys. Well, before I weigh the turtle, first I have to tend to my finger. I'm gonna actually cover him up. And to do that, I'm gonna get this turtle way bag wet, just to keep him nice and cool. Here in the sun, he will be fine, but this will also keep him calm and locked in position. You see that turtle under bag? He's gonna stay put. Okay, I'm gonna apply first aid to my own finger. And what I have here is a bottle of water, some gauze, a compression bandage, band-aid, and a simple pocket knife. What I wanna do is just temporarily get pressure on this, stop the bleeding so that we can finish the presentation and get the weight of this turtle. Like I said, I have not caught this turtle before, so getting its weight is very important. All right, makeshift blood clot right there. And now we can continue on with the presentation of this scene. And I think this is probably a very good point in time to note that snapping turtles, even for somebody like me who is a professional and who's handled hundreds of these turtles, can occasionally get a bite on you. And I'm very lucky that the turtle did not hold onto my finger or get more of it than it did. A few stitches will fix that right up. But right now, let's take a look at this giant. Oh, hey buddy. Oh, now he's got the turtle way bag in his mouth. You need that back. Come on, here, I'm gonna pick him up. There we go, hi buddy. Look at you. That is about as perfect as it gets for a common snapping turtle specimen. Now this is not Stumpbeak, but it is very similar in design. The carapace, which as we know is the top of the shell, looks almost identical to Stumpbeak's shell. Now when I went back there, there was another turtle and it may have been Stumpbeak that bit my finger, but 
This one is equally as handsome looking and certainly as healthy. This is not a 60 pound turtle, but I'm guessing it is probably somewhere close to 50. And like I said, this is a turtle that we do not yet have on record here. But let's take a look at this creature's tail. Let me turn it around for you here like this. Can you see it? Yep. Go ahead and zoom in there. A true dragon tail on this reptile. Let's see if I can bend it down a little bit for you there. Wow, quite the beast. I'll tell you what, it's a lot harder to handle a turtle too when you're missing the tip of your finger. And I'm trying to be really, really careful right now so that I am not bitten a second time. But look at those front limbs. He is massive. Huge claws, all in perfect condition. Perfect beak, eyes fully intact. You guys wanna see what his plaster on looks like? Yeah, let me lift it up for you. you see just how healthy this turtle is. Look at its underside there. That is an absolute giant. And as we know, turtles and their relatives have been on the planet for over 200 million years, and you can certainly see the prehistoric nature in this creature. Hi, buddy. I know you would love to get my nose in your mouth. We're gonna try to avoid that today, okay? All right, next thing I wanna do is get the weight of this turtle so we officially have it on record. And to do that, I'm going to set him down very gently here. Hold on just a second there, buddy. Okay, I do have my trusty turtle scale with me. Now this goes up to 50 pounds in weight. I do not believe that this turtle is over 50 pounds, but I am guessing that he is close. You see that? If we hit 50 pounds, it's considered a true swamp monster. I also have my turtle weigh bag here with me. Now to do this, uh -uh, you stay. Sometimes they listen to me. Okay. I'm gonna gently place him down inside of the bag, and we're gonna hoist him up. This is gonna cause no harm to the turtle whatsoever, and actually inside the bag, he will be a little more calm. Just like crocodilians, when you keep their eyes covered, don't you bite the bag. Watch your fingers. They oftentimes stay calm. And this is tricky because once he's in the bag, then of course you don't know where the head is, and things can get dangerous. Okay, turtle is in the bag. Head is right there. Now he can still bite through the bag, so we have to be extremely careful. I'm gonna bring the turtle up, and then I'm gonna get the position of the weight. Are you good? One, two, three. Is it maxing it? Nope. Okay, right there. 34 pounds is what he clocks in at. I knew he was under 50, but that is still a really, really good sized snapping turtle. All right, now the tricky part, getting him back out of the bag. Okay, the head's on that side. All right, come on, buddy. How about you go? All right. Oh, I know. Don't bite the bag, don't bite the bag. Okay. Whoa, what a big boy. There he is. Woo! Tell you what, even at 34 pounds, that is a lot to handle right there. So what are you gonna name him? Well, since it's a new catch, I think we should call him Big Chomper. How about that? Awesome. Remember guys, we're still looking for that world record size snapping turtle. So write in the comments section below, send us pictures on social media. I hear you hissing. Show us the pictures of the turtles you've seen and if it looks like something that could be a world record, we may show up in your city, in your backyard, in your pond to try to land a world record snapping turtle. All right, time to get him back into the water and get me to the hospital to get this finger sewn up. So what did we learn? Well, for starters, I didn't catch Stumpy, so that means it's still a mystery as to whether or not he has grown to world record proportions. I also learned what happens when you blindly reach your hand into the water after a snapping turtle. Ouch! But I got lucky once again, and hopefully my mishap was a clear warning that snapping turtles have the potential to be incredibly dangerous. Truth be told, I never went to the hospital but instead cleaned the bite thoroughly and kept a close eye on it to make sure that infection did not set in. This was certainly one painful mistake, but in the end, I love turtles, even if they do occasionally try to bite my fingers off. Australia is home to many reptilian species, and while several of them are found within the confines of the continent's interior, beyond the tide, you will find one of the world's most cherished animals, the green sea turtle. In the past, I've had the chance to swim alongside these elegant and timeless beings, 
Yet strict regulations prohibit anyone from making physical contact with these reptiles. However, on this adventure, that is all about to change. Today, the crew and I are heading off the coast of Bowen, a small town situated at the top of the Whit Sundays on the eastern side of Queensland. Under the invitation of the World Wildlife Fund, we will be given the chance to work alongside the traditional owner rangers from Jeru and Bindal people. These rangers take responsibility for the management and protection of their sea country, including iconic species like the green sea turtle. Their work includes safely catching, collecting data, and tagging these magnificent marine reptiles so scientists can then determine what is happening to the turtle population and ensure that the species is continuing to thrive in these warm waters. And as a Birragaba Jiru elder, I'd like to welcome you to country and hope you have a good day. Okay, what's going on? Doing a smoke ceremony right now, and the flames are just welcoming us into this, this community. I consider myself to be an expert when it comes to catching turtles. And my method of leaping from kayaks to catch snapping turtles has often proven to be incredibly successful. Catching sea turtles, however, is a very different challenge. As compared to snapping turtles, these ocean-dwelling reptiles are incredibly fast. And instead of leaping feet first from a slow rowing kayak, I will be jumping from a speeding boat. The good news is that I will be apprenticing a man who I now consider to be the greatest turtle catcher of all time, Aaron Taters. He will be showing me the tricks of the trade that he has spent several years mastering and which have resulted in the safe capture, data collection, tagging, and release for hundreds of sea turtles. So what are you looking for, Aaron? You looking for shadows in the water? Yeah, we're looking for a sort of a dark brown figure. Okay. We'll see the turtles still, or the sit still, or they'll make a move for it. The moment they move, we tell Eddie, yep, he's off to the right, and that's what we're chasing then. Gotcha. Yeah, this is kind of the same way I search for snapping turtles. I look for a dark shadow beneath the surface. Yeah, that's right. Wait for it to start moving. I know it's not a rock, and then you make it go. Yep. We, sometimes you will get confused because there's a lot of stingray around here. They just before you sing out, yeah, there's a turtle, just make yeah. sure you see his flippers first and Got then it. start chasing. Good year to one, good year to one, this is Little Dot Gungu. Any turtle sighted yet? Not yet, but we're working on it. We'll keep you posted. Roger that. Over and out. There he is there. To the right. Oh, got a turtle throw right here. He's just in front of us. Go on left. So really quick. Go on left. Upon spotting several smaller turtles and witnessing their impressive speed, I quickly realized that catching a sea turtle was going to be much more difficult than I had originally anticipated. There's a big turtle here, big one, big one. Oh. Go, go. a rough miss, but the good news is that Aaron was right there to follow up with an epic dive and successful catch. Boy, does he make it look easy. Oh! 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 Dude, I had his front flipper yeah. in my hand. Yeah, I thought that's what I, I had I... his flipper. <laughs> I said that, I said he's got him. Oh! Oh, him. Well, great catch again, Aaron. <laughs> Dude, that was epic, all right. Oh, I was so close. That was the one. I had the entire flipper in my hand and it went whoop, right out. I tried to grab the back of the shell, couldn't do it. But at least we caught the turtle. Let's get it onto the research boat, get the biometrics, and keep at it. As a team, our rate of success was fantastic. Yet my personal performance was lackluster at best. I could feel that my confidence for catching sea turtles was beginning to sink. Yet Aaron, 
being the incredible mentor that he was, continued to encourage and critique my style. It was the same thing before. I was not in front of the turtle. Time was running out, and my window to land a giant was beginning to close, when the boat slowly motored into a clear stretch of water that revealed a massive dark shadow beneath the surface. All right, guys, we got a good turtle out in front of us. Camera's rolling. This could be it. This was it. The pressure was on, and I would only have one dive, one chance to catch this turtle. Yep, yep, yep. Aaron kept his sights locked on the speeding reptile, waiting for an opportune moment when it would slow its forward momentum and prepare to breach the surface for a breath of air. This would be my window of opportunity, and in that instance, he shouted the command. Dead breath, dead breath. Size turtle right there, without question, the biggest turtle I've ever caught. <laughs> Man! Ah. I told you guys I'd do it. Oh, nice. a big that's one. a male. That's, yeah, that's a male. Oh. Woo! Look at that tail. Oh man! My goodness! That's a dragon tail. Oh. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's my dragon right there! <laughs> Man! Best turtle catch ever! Of my life at least! Woo! Alright guys, we gotta get the rest of our gear, yep. get onto the research boat, get the biometrics, and then release this dragon back into the wild. Yes! Yes! I hope I caught all that on this camera. guys well there we have it there is the green sea turtle that i landed and he is an absolute giant this is the first male of the trip that we have caught an absolute beast can you guys believe this i can't believe you caught it that what was amazing a catch. Catch. well when i jumped into the water i kind of went to the side i grabbed the side of its shell my hand slid down i held onto the back of the shell and actually climbed up the side of it to get right behind the back of the carapace and you can see how healthy this turtle is look at it is actually spilling out of its shell i know buddy now let's take a look at the carapace of this reptile it is massive and i love this teardrop shape you see that this allows these turtles to stay completely streamlined when they're swimming under the water. If you take a look here, look at the size of this turtle's tail. Just like a snapping turtle, male green sea turtles have an extremely long tail. Look at that. As long and as big around as my arm is. An absolute dragon tail right there. Now, you hear the name green sea turtle, and you may be thinking to yourselves, well, coyote, it's mostly brown in coloration. Why do they call it a green sea turtle? That name comes from a thick layer of green fat that exists just beneath the bone of the carapace that insulates them between the bone and all of their main organs. I know, buddy, you just want to get back out there into the ocean, don't you? Now, this guy's just fine. Don't worry. Sea turtles can stay out of the water for an extended period of time. Oh, what a beautiful turtle. Look at those eyes. Such kind, intelligent eyes. And you may notice that the turtle's eyes are very wet. Almost looks like it's crying. It's not crying. All turtles are capable of secreting a mucus from their eye membrane to help keep their eyes wet when they're out of the water. This goes for all turtles. Painted turtles, snapping turtles, spiny soft shells, even sea turtles have the ability to secrete that mucus. Now, you'll notice the beak of this reptile is not hooked. 
because unlike a snapping turtle, they're not out there actually hunting for prey. When they get to be this big, they're completely herbivores, just kind of sifting along the bottom, eating algae and seagrass. And the underside, oh, let me see, look at that. You see how the lower part of the jaw is actually serrated? They have bolt cutter-like power that would easily snip off the edge of your finger. So when I jumped into the water, the first thing I was thinking was, don't get my fingers near the mouth of the turtle. All right, Coyote, I think, hey, Mario, why don't you uh, jump in there and help Coyote? Yeah, I'm gonna need some help. This turtle is so unbelievably strong. It, it doesn't want to spin. We want to keep it as calm as we possibly can. There you go, buddy. Mario, you kind of got locked in place yeah. there? Yeah, sure good. Okay, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the length of the carapace. Tracy, if you got that measure, okay, thank you. I know, buddy. I know. Shh, 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 shh. Sometimes what I do with snapping turtles is actually just to place my hand on top of the head. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit quieter. Got them calmed down now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go right from the front edge of the carapace there. Mario, if you wanna just hold that in place. Yep, you're good. Right down the center line. It is right at 94 centimeters. Show me that real quick. Check that out. Without question, the largest turtle I have ever caught. Thank you, Tracy. All right, now the next thing we want to do is get this turtle's weight. Getting the turtle inside of this harness was one of the most difficult aspects of this whole episode so far. Do you guys have any guesses as to how much this turtle weighs? Uh, 240 pounds. 240 pounds. Mario? Uh, 250. 250. Oh, okay. Ben, what do you think? Hey, Ben, what do you think? I'm gonna go 275. 275. Wow, all right. Uh, I'm gonna go 230. 230. Yeah. Say it weighs 230. And good. Clear. Turtle is off the ground. Oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. Flying turtle. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. He, he's clear. 104.1 kilos. Bring it down. All right, fly. 230 pounds. Wow. wow. You're right on the right. I guessed it. 230. <laughs> Amazing. 230 pounds is what this green sea turtle weighs. What an absolute giant. Amazing. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is tag the sea turtle. This one has never been tagged before, so that's really exciting for today's research. Where I'm going to tag it is right up here on its left fin between these two scales. You see that right there? Now, is that a fin or a flipper, Kennedy? Oh, I guess, yeah, it's, whether you call it a fin or you call it a flipper or a foot, sea turtles, and one of the things that really makes them different than other turtles, is you can see they do not have typical toes. And like other turtles, they're not actually able to tuck inside of their shells, even less so than a snapping turtle. This isn't gonna hurt. This is gonna be like getting your ear pierced. I'm gonna do this as quickly and as smoothly as possible. You got a good shot right there, Mark. Sure do. All right, big guy. This is just now gonna their be skin a is really tough. This isn't hurting the turtle. No, this is this skin is like leather. And I'm gonna ratchet down real tight here. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Perfect. All right, the turtle is officially tagged. And as you guys know, I name all the turtles that I catch. And I think we're gonna name this one Eddie, after the man who so there perfectly captained the ship today and lined us up to be able to make this catch possible. I did not expect to catch a turtle this size. I was just hoping that I could catch a single sea turtle. And after getting the chance to stand on the front of that boat and watch Aaron dive in and catch several turtles, I said to myself, you know what? I think I can pull this off, but to catch one of this size is truly something that I never thought was possible. Biggest turtle I have ever caught. Wow, what an epic end to one amazing day here in Australia. And I have to give an enormous thank you to the World Wildlife Fund of Australia and the Gujarat Rangers for bringing us out, showing us the conservation work that they're doing and all the efforts they're making to not only preserve, but also protect these incredible marine reptiles. All right, guys, it's time to get Eddie back off into the ocean. The green sea turtle represents everything that is beautiful about our oceans and they are considered to be one of the most revered reptiles on our planet. Their sentient nature has made them an iconic figure in the world of conservation. Yet the future of this creature is unknown, as their species is either considered threatened or endangered throughout their worldwide range. Still hope glows brightly on the horizon, as organizations like WWF 
and traditional owner rangers are constantly researching and promoting the environmental preservation and conservation of this species, ultimately ensuring a legacy for generations to come. It is officially spring in Ohio, which means that it is also time for us to start catching snapping turtles. Dragon Tails kicks off today. Now, we just got back from Australia, and the marketing team said, you can go out into the field today on one condition. And I said, okay, what's that condition? The Brave Wilderness Adventure Kit Reptiles and Amphibians Edition just came out, and they said, here's the challenge, here's your mission. Can you take the kit out? One of the coolest things in the kit is the toy common snapping turtle. Coyote, can you catch a snapping turtle and get a photograph of the toy snapping turtle on top of a real snapping turtle? And I said, you better believe I can. So myself and Mario, who's operating GoPros today, and I'll have GoPro too. Actually, why don't I just turn on and get a shot of you, Mario, filming me. Hold on, not on yet. There we go. Howdy. There's Mario filming me. Our goal is going to be to catch the first snapping turtle of the year and get a picture of a toy snapping turtle on top of a real one. So stick with us. It's gonna get muddy. It's gonna get wet. With any luck, we're gonna find some dragons. Now, some people say that the most wonderful time of the year is Christmas. But as far as Coyote Peterson and Mario Aldecoa are concerned, the best time of the year is spring when all of the animals start moving. So now today, we're at one of my favorite metro parks in central Ohio, Blacklick Woods Metro Park. And what, did you see something already? Yeah, I go grab the other camera. Oh, Mario is getting a walking shot of us going past the camera. I guess we don't want to leave that back there. We are cutting through the underbrush, headed down towards the pond. This will be the very first snapping turtle of the year. Oh, I'm excited. Now, the only concern that I have right now is that it is not very warm out. And holy mackerel, I just found an enormous deer antler. Holy cow. Dude, Mario, look what I just found. No kidding, dude. Wow. Look at the size of that shed. Whoa. Literally just found this. Holy cow. So you may remember the buddy film that Mario and I shot uh, this past winter looking for sheds and right here on the side of the pond is a huge antler. Holy cow. That's huge. This is one of the biggest antlers I've ever found. Yeah. <laughs> but again, because we're in the metro parks, it's not something we could actually keep, but I am going to turn this one into the visitor center so other people can enjoy it. Look at that. Wow, stuff's already starting to chomp on it. You can see right there. Wow. That is a great start to the day. See, this gives me confidence because it means we don't have to go out in the freezing cold to find antlers, right? We could just go out when it's warm. He does make a pretty good point. Looks like we can find antlers when it gets a little warmer. This is great. All right, let's find some turtles. It's kind of fun filming episodes with just GoPros. Makes it a little more challenging. Okay, you ready to get into the water? Let's do it. Here we go. best play is to really just kind of fan out and keep our wits about us. Is that movement over there? Where? What is that? Or is that vegetation that's moving? You see that? That's some vegetation because that could be on the back of a coral shell. It's moving. It's definitely moving. That's not the wind. I think that is a coral. Hold on. Yeah, it is. Yep. It is. Going for it. Got it. Nice. Yes. Nice. Look at that. First snapping turtle of the year. Wow. He is a beaster. Look at the size of that dragon. Wow, he is a heavy boy. This looks just like the toy tube. Oh, sorry, I'm watching again. <laughs> Holy mackerel, first snapping turtle of the year. There it is. Wow, hi buddy. I recognize you. I know you, I've caught you before. You are looking good and healthy. I haven't caught this turtle in a couple years. His name is Carl and oh, he is a good looking turtle. All right, let's get him back over here. Mission complete in just a matter of minutes getting out here into the pond. Our first snapping turtle of the year. All right, let's get him up on shore and get our photograph. Okay, so I'm gonna sit you here. You're not gonna get away and go anywhere. Although now you just took a 
mouthful of leaves. Whew. Getting muddy. That is the only way to do it in dragon season. Man. Okay, go ahead, hand me the adventure kit. Oh, we got some water in there. Ooh. So I'm gonna record all my snapping turtle data inside the reptiles and amphibians field journal this year. Okay. And our real goal, this is so cool. This turtle looks exactly like the turtle we caught. It does. That is amazing. <laughs> they are almost identical. You could not have planned this any better. Oh, buddy, I'm so happy to see you. What an awesome turtle. I can't believe it. It looks <laughs> just like him. Here, let me prop them both up on my leg for a second. And when people ask, are you toys anatomically accurate? I think this pretty much proves it. Look at the color design of the toy turtle as compared to the real turtle. I see you're very close to my nose. No, we're not biting coyote's nose today. The head structure, triangular in shape, yellow eyes, dark colored head, lighter forelimbs and hind limbs, and the quintessential greenish brown carapace, which of course, as we know, is the top of the shell. Now, if you look at the plastron of the toy snapping turtle, it's one of the key features when it comes to truly identifying this as a snapping turtle. And let's look at the bottom of the actual turtle itself. Completely accurate in design. Look at that. Toy common snapping turtle. How cool is this? <laughs> now we need to do is get the ultimate photograph so you can take the photo while I hold on to both of these turtles because obviously taking the photo myself in this instance isn't exactly gonna be possible. I don't think it gets any better than this. Dude, I'm so excited. It's the perfect turtle for this shot. <laughs> okay, so with every snapping turtle that I catch and document for the Columbus Metro Parks, I make sure to take measurements. This is my little turtle measuring tape. Pretty cool, it's a turtle and its tail is the actual measuring tape. So I wanna get the length of the carapace, both the length and the width. What I'm gonna do to record that information is actually write it down in my reptiles and amphibians field journal. I have not put turtle numbers into these books yet, but now that we have them, it's the perfect place to record all of that data. Now we need to do the weight. I have a basic 50 pound scale. I know this turtle is not over 50 pounds. And of course, my classic weigh bag that has shown up in pretty much every episode of Dragon Tales. Okay, ready? Turtle going up. Okay, you are clear. Clear. Oh man, right there, 30 pounds. This turtle is about six pounds heavier than he has been in the past. Oh, there we go, give me that backpack. All right, well, we got our ultimate photograph at this point. I think the marketing team is going to be thrilled. I have to give you guys a warning. If you're out this spring and you see a snapping turtle in the wild, do not try to get your toy close like I did. They have an incredibly powerful bite and a turtle this size could easily, I know, take off a finger. And you can even see how powerful it is when it comes to biting on to Carl Jr. Can I have this back? Carl, can I have the toy back? I guess you like toy turtles just as much as the rest of us. So guys, if you see snapping turtles out moving about this spring, simply admire them from a safe distance. All right, girl, back off in the wild with you. What a great start to the Dragon Tails season. Our first snapping turtle of the year, a 30 pound giant. And I cannot wait to see what sort of turtles we manage to get up close for the cameras in the coming weeks. Since the dawn of mankind, stories have been the fuel responsible for igniting our imaginations. Many tales are centered around some type of legend, and whether based in historical fact or unauthenticated lore, it's these so-called legends that stoke our imaginations and cause them to burn wild. I was once privy to a legend, the tale of a man that licked a frog in the name of science. However, unlike most fairy tales, the end to this story was not concluded that fine frog licking day. Instead of a happy ending, 
the power possessed from the poison of that frog metamorphosized this once somewhat sane man into an unspeakable creature that lurked amongst our planet's muddy swamps and rolling riverbeds. Hold on tight, little ones, because this is the legend of the Pantanel Frog Man. What's going on, Coyote Pack? It's a dark, eerie night here in Texas. And we're heading out into these dark waters to try to find some nocturnal creatures. To be able to do this, I'm taking on the full form of the Pantanal Frogman. Now, we had some rain move through earlier today, which was fantastic. It's got all the animals moving right now. I do see some fish. Moss turtle. Get that turtle. Yes, look at that. <laughs> First creature of the night. That is a razorback musk turtle, I think. Well, I can't see it too good. Let's come up here on the shore and take a look. Woo! The razorback musk turtle. The musk turtle gets its name from a very pungent musk that they will release when they feel threatened. And right now this turtle is not releasing any musk, which means you're rather comfortable. You're not even tucking into your shell. The name Razorback Musk Turtle in part also comes from the ridges that run right down the center of the carapace. When these turtles are juveniles, and this is what I would consider a full grown adult, but when they're juveniles, those ridges are much more prominent, very well pronounced, almost look like the blades of a saw. That's where they get the name Razorback. Now, similar to snapping turtles, they have a rather small plastron, which as we know is the bottom of the shell. And they cannot completely tuck their arms, legs, and head in. And while they're not related to snapping turtles, the reason that they've developed this ability to secrete that musk is to ward off predators. Now, if threatened, they can give a pretty painful little bite. You can see the hook on the underside of that jaw. Not too much of a hook on the top of the beak, but the underside, if that catches onto your finger, it will definitely take a chunk out of you, that's for sure. You are just the cutest little turtle. In the real hot months of summer like this, these turtles will stay hunkered down during the day, but it's at night when they will come out and start to do their hunting. I imagine this turtle was foraging along for small tadpoles, fish, and maybe even frogs, small frogs, if it could come across it. All right, let's let this little turtle go and see what else we can find. Good get. That water is way too deep to catch a gar in. My cousin, the bullfrog, relative to the Pontanel frogman, saw me, swam way out into the deep water. No chance of getting that guy. Just cooter, just cooter. Get that turtle. Too slow. Oh, it's a lot deeper out there than it looks. I actually got real close to him, and then he realized I was just behind him, and he went boom, like a bullet. Oh, that was close. That would have been a great one. That was a cooter, which is a big turtle. A lot of these fish look like they're already asleep. There's a cooter, another cooter right there. And yeah, it's not on to us yet. I can get this one. Hold on, don't move, don't move, don't move. Round two. Get that turtle. Come 
here, right here, right here, right here. Ah, it's getting away. Do left side, right here, right here. Got him. They are so slippery underwater. Yes, that's one wild turtle catch right there. Okay, let's go back up to the shore and take a look. That is one good looking cooter right there. Oh my goodness. Nice cooter turtle. Wow. Believe it or not, that's the first time I have ever caught a cooter. Look at that turtle. Now, these are oftentimes easily mistaken for red-eared sliders, but as you can see, much larger and beautiful coloration. Look at the yellow striping that runs all down the length of the face and forearms. And then the carapace is absolutely stunning. This turtle is unbelievably slippery. That is such a cool turtle. Look at the weird design to the nose. Now, as compared to a painted turtle or red-eared slider, which has a much more prominent nose, this has a very stumped piggy looking nose. And you can see this turtle's rather gregarious, keeping its arms and legs tucked in. Oh, there we go. Now you're, you're gonna swim, you're gonna swim in the air. It's actually the best way to hold on to this turtle. You can see I'm balancing it beneath on its plastron and the legs can't actually reach me. Wow, look at the beak. It almost looks as if this turtle has teeth. It has serrated beak. That is crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Certainly not a turtle that I'd want to get bitten by. This thing could give you a serious chomp. Now, in comparing this cooter to the turtle that we caught earlier, the Razorback Musk Turtle, the design is quite a bit different. You'll notice how large the cooter is as compared to the Musk Turtle. And when we looked at the Musk Turtle, it had a very small plastron. And remember, its appendages could not actually tuck into its shell, but that's completely the opposite with the cooter. Look how far those rear legs and front legs are capable of tucking in. Even an alligator would have a hard time eating a turtle like this. It would have to be a very big alligator to be able to chomp through the shell. Anything under the length of four feet, alligator-wise, is likely not going to try to eat a turtle like this. Now, the streamlined design of the carapace, you can see it has these ridges, almost looks like a fighter jet, and that allows the turtle to perfectly hydrodynamically move itself through the water. Wow, well, how cool is that? I turn myself into the Pontanel Frogman for a night of catching unique turtles. All right, Cooter, time to get you back into the water. No one really knows what happened to the frogman after that night he finally caught a cooter. But legend says that if you are under a full moon in the swamps of southeastern Texas, that sometimes you can hear him calling. Bar, bar. So until next time, just make sure that's only a mere bullfrog you hear walloping when wandering around a swamp at night. For the Pantanel Frogman stirs and awaits. The dark swampy waters of Southeast Texas conceal many mysterious predators, but nothing is more impressive than the reptile you are about to witness. Hailing as the largest freshwater turtle in North America, this species is shrouded in folklore, and the stories they spark are famous for igniting a status that is considered legendary. The alligator snapping turtle reigns as the dragon of Texas. I have teamed up with Carl and Viviana of Texas Turtles. This conservation group is on the front lines of protecting our shelled friends. No matter the species, they love turtles. For several days, we have been working under special permits to catch and record this location's resident gator snapper population. Using a safe method known as hoop netting, we have had some incredible success landing a variety of algae-covered swamp monsters. By now we know the famous phrase, everything is bigger in Texas, and the turtles are no exception which means that some nets simply aren't big enough. And that is where I come into play. Get ready, this episode is about to get wild. Okay, I'm checking a net that is close to 
the edge right here. I think we've got a turtle. It's moving. This net is moving right here. All right, I'm gonna pull it up and take a look. Oh, no. It was outside of the net. Big turtle right outside of the net. No, there it goes. And now he is back off and into the swamp. That is a very large snake. The water's too deep and too murky. I can't see anything. I'm so tempted to just, just dive and go for it. A dangerous thing about doing something like that is without being able to see which end of the turtle is the front end of the turtle, the last thing you want is to get your hand into the mouth of a hundred pound gargantuan prehistoric reptile. The turtle is sitting right there. I see his head, he's coming up right here. He's right there. I'm gonna make a jump. One, two. Oh yeah! Oh. That is how you jump in to catch our gargantuan snapping turtle. Woohoo! If at first you don't catch it with the trap, you wait just a few seconds longer and the turtle will return to the bait all the way underwater. And that is the only way that I have learned to catch snapping turtles. No nets, no traps, no problem. Oh buddy, that it's a good turtle right there. My goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm coming up, watch your feet. That is one powerful reptile right there. And a turtle <coughs> with jaws of that size could definitely take off your hand. A second I went underwater, my hand slid down the side of his carapace. I was like, oh, please get to the backside of this turtle and don't let your hand end up in those jaws. Yes, yes, we have ourselves a really good looking alligator snapping turtle. How about that? A little bit of patience is all took and I knew, I knew you were gonna come back for that bait, but you didn't think I'd be waiting, did you? Oh, okay, um, if you can go run and get Carl and Viviana, um, I'll stay here with the turtle. We'll get these biometrics. Yes, yes. And there you have it. That is a true prehistoric giant. The alligator snapping turtle, the reptile that we have been searching for and safely trapping with the hoop nets for the past couple days. Now we've caught a couple of smaller turtles, but nothing so far of this size. And truth be told, like I said, during the process of that all unfolding, this turtle wasn't actually quite in the net yet. So jumping into the water to catch it ended up being the right tactic. But the thing about this turtle that makes it so unique is just its prehistoric design. Look at this creature covered in algae, gnarled carapace, and a mouth that certainly means business. Now one of the big differences between the alligator snapping turtle and the common snapping turtle is the reach of that head. And while the skull may be massive and the spread of those jaws incredible, and the power definitely strong enough to take off a finger or crush a hand, it doesn't quite have the reach of the common snapping turtle. So me being this close to this turtle, I don't feel as if I'm in danger in any way, shape, or form. And one of the most fascinating aspects about the alligator snapping turtle is actually the way that it hunts. This is considered an ambush predator as compared to the common snapping turtle, which I would say is much more nomadic. All this reptile needs to do is lay on a body of water and wait for its prey to come to it. If you zoom in on the underside of that jaw there, you can see that little fleshy appendage moving around. It looks just like a worm. Now, this is called lingual luring. The turtle will lay in wait, wiggle that worm, and a fish will get close thinking, oh, look at this, I found an easy meal. But it's exactly the opposite. The fish gets close, the snapping turtle clamps down its jaws, and the fish went from potential predator to prey item. At this size, the only threat that a turtle of this magnitude faces is human interaction. 
The alligator snapping turtle is considered a protected species, which means it is illegal to go out and catch, harass, or interact with these reptiles unless you have the proper permits. However, that doesn't stop people from poaching these reptiles. They're oftentimes traded on the black market in the pet trade, but also the food trade. Believe it or not, this turtle is the origin of turtle soup. So we have to work collectively, all of us, to make sure that the protections stay in place to keep these prehistoric looking reptiles safe here on our planet. I absolutely love the carapace of these turtles. Now, as compared to the common snapping turtle, the alligator snapping turtle has these very distinct ridges that run the length of its body. Now, not only do they look cool and they gave them their namesake, the alligator snapping turtle, because when they come to the surface, it almost looks like the back of an alligator, but they have functionality. During storm surge and hurricane season, if the water levels change quickly, this turtle's capable of wedging itself down in between logs. It will essentially lock itself in place to make sure that it does not move from the territory that it is currently protecting. And when you look at it, it's got all this algae and even little worms and leeches crawling around on it. There's an ecosystem existing on the back of this reptile. One thing that I do love about these turtles is their eyes. Look at that, black and gold focused, all those little fleshy little particles of skin growing off of them. And that helps to keep these animals camouflaged underwater. You can see the algae that's growing on that turtle's face. It really looks like a rock when it's laying on the basin of a body of water waiting for its prey to get close. And looking inside that mouth, that's probably about as close as I want to get. And you'll notice there's a hole that keeps opening up inside its mouth there. That's actually the way that this turtle breathes. That little hole connects to the roof of its skull, which then connects to its nostrils, and that's how they're able to come up above the water, take a quick breath without opening their mouths. That also helps them when they're in the process of eating, make sure that no water goes down and into their lungs. Okay, I'd say that this turtle's about ready to get back into the water, so it's time to do the important work. I'm gonna bring in Carl and Viviana from Texas Turtles, and we're going to collect the necessary data that they need to make sure that this turtle is properly documented. All right, guys, you ready to pull the biometrics? Let's do it. Catching is fun, but the most important aspect to Carl and Viviana's research is the biometrics. Head width is taken first, followed by carapace and plastron lengths. Next, a pit tag, which stands for passive integrated transponder, is quickly inserted. No, this is not a tracking chip, but instead is an identification tag that can quickly be scanned to ID this turtle if it is caught again in the future. Think of it kind of like a turtle's social security number. Last, but certainly not least, is my favorite part, the turtle's weight. This big boy isn't going to set any world records, but it does boast being the biggest turtle we caught on this round of research. 70.3 pounds, yes! That is a good sized turtle, that's for sure. I'll give you a look at the scale there. With the biometrics complete, this turtle is now ready for release. Well, it's officially time to release this prehistoric behemoth back into the wild. But before I do, I just want to give a big thanks to Texas Turtles for allowing us to assist in the important research that they've been doing to help preserve the alligator snapping turtle. Around the world, turtles are under threat. And as I mentioned earlier, there is no collective species that is considered more endangered than our shell-covered friends. The work Carl and Viviana do through Texas Turtles on a year-round basis is not only about collecting data, it's about spreading a message of change and fostering an understanding that turtles play a crucial role in the natural ecosystem. Illegal poaching, black market trade, and habitat destruction are only three of the biggest threats turtles face. And until we get protections in place for all turtle species, they will always be at risk. Brave Wilderness continues to drive a narrative about turtle conservation and why it is so important, but I encourage you to get involved. If you love turtles and want to help, check out the links we suggest in the video description below. Pick one of the turtle conservation groups and make a donation share their site on your social media, or reach out and ask how you can get involved. The world is a better place because of turtles, so let's make sure that as humans, we create a better future 
for this species. Oh, look at this environment. This is awesome. This is just completely a green algae mess of ooze. Perfect snapping turtle habitat. But it does make them a little difficult to see. We're gonna move out and around this tree. Be really tough to catch anything right here. Is that a turtle? It is a turtle. How are you gonna Tuck get back it? in those logs. I don't have to dive all the way back in there. Are you good? Oh, he's moving. Oh, oh, no, he's I'm losing it. Oh, oh. I lost it. I lost it. Where'd it go? You see where it is? This way. Oh, oh, under me, under me, right there, right there, right there. Go around. Oh. Did you feel him? No, I didn't. I'm pretty sure that oh. was him. That was so close. So close. A catch and a miss. I had the back of its shell and then it propelled itself forward and pulled right out of my hand. Well, I'd say that's it for this location. Okay, we're on to our second location. There's some huge turtles in here, but they're very tough to catch. I actually see one that's up against the side of the pond. Might be able to get this one by hand. Is that in? Yeah. How deep is it? Really deep. All right, we're going to the kayak. I can't catch that turtle. Good turtle right there. Okay, uh, in the boat with you, buddy. This is definitely the most difficult part right here, getting a turtle in your boat and then getting it back into a controlled setting. Not the biggest turtle in here, but we got one. Check that out. Definitely bigger than the first turtle we caught today. This turtle is actually named Winston. Only the second time I have ever caught this dragon. Now look at the nose, the beak is a little, worn down, but this is still a very, very healthy common snapping turtle. All right, we have seen three turtles, we have caught two. I think it's time that we move on to the next location and see if we can up our numbers. All right, let's get this guy back into the water. Okay, location number three, one of my favorite spots in Gahanna, Ohio, and I already see a snapping turtle out there moving in the mud. We're going straight into this. There he is, he's gonna start moving. Oh, and just like that. Wow, there we go. Turtle number three. And this is one of the most famous turtles here in central Ohio. His name is Homer. I have named all the turtles in this location after mythological Greek gods. And this is one of the most dominant reptiles in this spot. Now, not as big and as heavy as some of the other turtles that we see in other locations, but definitely just as angry. Well, how about that? Walking right up, and that is turtle number three of the day. Very, very sharp claws on this turtle. Okay, let's see who else we can find. Looking good, buddy. There you go. All right. That's a great start for this location. Okay, we're heading back into here. See if we can find some more turtles. This is really good for our numbers, right? That is great. That is a perfect I mean, start. for our time. Yes. That's gonna help. Here's another turtle right here, right here. <laughs> that is Hercules. Woo, Homer and Hercules back to back. Look at that. This turtle is the biggest turtle that lives in this location. How about that? Back to back turtles right next to each other. Oh, that is Unbelievable. Great. What a beautiful common snapping turtle. And I am very happy to see that he is healthy and doing well. Hi, buddy. How are you? He's like, oh, hey, coyote. How are you? All right, that is four turtles now. I'm gonna place them right back here. Watch your toes, and we'll see who else we can find. All right, off you go. How about that? Woo! Our numbers, just like that, are back in our favor. I'd say that's pretty good for this location. We caught two of the three turtles that live in this very small urban swamp. That brings our total count up to four. We're almost halfway there, and we still got the best location to come. 
That was huge. That may be the fastest I've ever caught two very sizable snapping turtles back to back. All right, guys, last location. Do you believe in miracles? Can I catch six turtles in the next two hours at this location? Only time will tell. We got one time around the pond. Here we go. Uh, the sunlight is definitely helping us right now. I can see right down to the bottom. So if there's a turtle hunting or moving, I should be able to see it. There's one right there, right in front of you. Oh, he's a big one. Big one. All the water's deep, completely getting swallowed in water. That is cold, but that is a huge turtle. One of the biggest turtles that lives in this location. The turtle known as Big Daddy. And that is, wow, officially our fifth turtle of the day. I'm just gonna let him go. We gotta keep moving. Here we go, moving on. See you later, big guy. Wow, what a catch. Yes. Man, my waders are completely full of water. I might need to drain them. <laughs> yeah. Snapper right there. Turtle, turtle, turtle. It's Hubert. No, it's not. Look at this guy. Yes, look at that. Turtle number six. <laughs> wow, I don't know what this turtle is. I've actually never caught it before in this body of water, but that is turtle number six. I've officially tied my personal best. Six turtles in a single day. We've only got four more to go. How awesome is that? Woo! That is one stinky snapping turtle right there. All right, put him right back in, and let's see if we can get number seven. Oh, we're heating up now. Yes! What's exciting about this is that if I catch a seventh turtle, that will be my new personal record for most turtles caught in a day. Got a snapping turtle right here, hunkered down, just hiding. Come here, buddy. There we go, look at that. Turtle number seven. <laughs> wow, there we have it. That's seven, that's my new personal record in a single day. Nice. Not a huge turtle, but that is number seven. Wow, this is a really good looking little turtle. Some of the claws are kind of nubbed off in the front, probably from fighting with another snapping turtle at some point. Okay, this guy's going right back down into Ooh. the mud. See you, buddy. Ooh, Ooh. Don't bite me. Feisty. Okay, turtle number eight, let's find it. It's tough because I want to go as fast as possible because we're running out of time, but you really have to glide slowly when you're looking for snapping turtles because if you drift too far past one, you'll have no chance of catching it. Big turtle right there, it's Oscar, it's Oscar. Gigantor, it's Oscar. Oh my goodness, it's Oscar. This is the largest snapping turtle in this body of water. And he means business. Look at the size of him. Holy mackerel, that is turtle number eight right there. Hold on, I'm losing him. Oh, he's so slippery. Wow, 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 wow. Look at the size of that dragon. Oh my gosh, he is so incredibly heavy. Is that the biggest one so far? This is the biggest one without question. Oh. This is the largest snapping turtle out in this body of water and he is as prehistoric as it gets. All right guys, there it is. Turtle number eight. Nine and 10 is all that's left. All right guys. We are almost out of light. The water is perfectly calm though right now. Can we catch turtles nine and 10? Let's see what happens. What's crazy about this location is there's probably 30 turtles, maybe more that live in here. Sun's behind a cloud. It's definitely hurt me right now. Between that and the fact that I cannot the, even the shallow water is extremely murky.
Man, if our conditions were just a little bit better, I think we would have would have gotten it. All right, we'll go back up through here. I think that'll do it. Valiant's effort. <sighs> this close. We topped out at eight turtles today. Oh, I look back at that one turtle that I missed and we could have made it to nine. But in the end, I did beat my personal record, which was six turtles in a single day. And I can't be too disappointed. Not only did we catch Big Daddy, we also caught Oscar, the largest turtle that lives here at the Row Lake. And that's the story of snapping turtles right there. The legend, you're always going after the next big turtle. In this instance, it was, can I catch 10 turtles in a single day? I was close, so close. I feel like if the conditions had been just a little bit better, if the water had been a little clearer, if there may have been a little less wind and a little more sun, we may have pulled it off. But hey, eight turtles in a single day isn't bad. They say that the country roads of West Virginia will take you home to the place where you belong. And while that might be true in the iconic words of legendary singer John Denver, these country roads actually cut right through the home of its native animal species. In fact, roadways, no matter how scenic, are actually the most hazardous threat to local wildlife in all states across the nation. It's heartbreaking to comprehend, but thousands of animals are struck and sadly lose their lives to vehicles every single year. And in the spring, Turtles, yes, adorable little turtles who are on their way to lay eggs, face the ever-looming threat of car tires. All right, hazards are on. Is he alive? He's alive. Oh, oh no, he doesn't look like he's been hit. That's an old no. injury. So we are in West Virginia. We just actually got into the state. It hasn't taken long for us to find some wildlife. Today there's a lot of turtles actually moving, box turtles. So we're gonna do you a little favor. Hopefully you stay out of these roads. But it's very important that you don't interfere too much. You wanna place them in the exact direction they're going. Easiest spot is to place it right here. And uh, yeah, good luck. The eastern box turtle is one of the most common reptile species in the wild and wonderful state of West Virginia. And every year between late May and early July, they are on the move. This is breeding and nesting season, which keeps both the males and females in a constant state of locomotion. However, as a turtle, that motion isn't exactly speedy. This time of year, you can see dozens of box turtles on the crawl and doing their best to cross roadways. If you're a good turtle Samaritan like me, there's a good chance you will stop your vehicle and help a turtle in need. That's a turtle. Yep, another turtle. Yep, it is a turtle. All right, I'm gonna put my hazards on and then I'm gonna pull over to the side. Okay. Okay, go ahead, go. Buddy. You are right in the middle of the road. This is the most dangerous spot that a turtle could possibly be hanging out. This busy roadway, look, we've got a car coming right here. All right, so this box turtle is headed in this direction across the road into the forest. And what we're gonna do, wow, this is the biggest one that we have seen. Pick this guy up, look at that, not even tucking into the shell. That is a perfect box turtle specimen right there. All right, Mario, you good? It's headed this direction towards the woods. Here come cars, let's get over here. This is probably the one to do a presentation with. Look at this, not even tucking into his shell. What a brave little turtle. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Now, if you were to ask me, what is the field guide perfect specimen when it comes to the Eastern box turtle? This one, without question, would be it. And now, let's talk about safety when it comes to helping a turtle across the road. Oftentimes in the past, I've taught you guys the right way to move a snapping turtle, but here in West Virginia, there are box turtles all over the roads. You always wanna pull your vehicle to a stop 
put on your hazard lights and make sure that there are no cars coming in either direction. Move quickly, pick the turtle up gently, and then move it exactly in the direction it was headed. Even if it's a water turtle, like a painted turtle, a blanding turtle, or a snapping turtle, if you see a body of water on the side of the road from where it was coming, don't place it back in that water. It's likely a female on her way to lay eggs. Now, when it comes to box turtles, they also have a very small home range. So if you see one of these turtles crossing the road, you don't want to pick it up and take it home with you or move it to another location. They are very territorial. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Coyote, how do you know that this is a male box turtle? The males actually have some very distinct features. First of all, their eyes are oftentimes very red in coloration. So go ahead and zoom in there on the eyes of that turtle. You see how beautiful they are bright red, and then the forelimbs, which are the front legs, are often very vibrant. Look at that bright orange coloration. Such a proud and handsome turtle. Now, when it comes to the shell itself, the plastron, which is the bottom of the shell, if it's a male, is concave. That's when they're breeding with a female, they can mount up on top of the female and hold themselves in place for that breeding purpose. I just love the design of box turtles. And you can see, you're not even tucking into your shell. That's perfect for us to be able to look at your features. You see that hind leg? You see those long, sharp claws? Those are very unique. Box turtles are excellent at digging. And they will forage through the environment looking for food. These are opportunistic omnivores, which means that they will feast upon anything they come across. It can be plant matter, it can be dead animals, but they specialize in eating small creatures like worms. Insects, invertebrates, arachnids make the perfect prey for a box turtle like this. Now, one thing that makes the box turtle very unique as compared to other turtle species is its shell. Now, it gets the name box turtle from the shape of the shell. The shell is very box shaped if I hold it like that. It does have a roundness to the top of the carapace, but very square in design, especially if I hold it like this. Now, the box turtle shell is unique in that it is hinged. Very few turtle species have the ability to completely tuck themselves into their shells. Box turtles are one of those species. Now, we have featured the Blanding's turtle in the past, which has a partially hinged plastron, but the box turtle specifically is capable of tucking its head and its legs. Let's see if we can get you to do that. You see that? Tucking completely into the shell. Look at that. All the way tucked in. How cool is that? Now this works as a defense against any potential predator. So a raccoon, a coyote, a mink, a fox, anything like that that would make a meal of a box turtle is not able to get into the soft parts of the reptile to make a meal of it. However, when it comes to a vehicle, the weight and the power of a car tire can easily crush this shell. So the biggest danger that a turtle like this faces out here in the environment is actually man-made systems like roads. And this time of year, when you have box turtles moving around frequently, their biggest threat is, of course, cars. You've got to be more careful when you're crossing the road. These turtles tend to stay to forested areas. You'll often sometimes find them in meadows, anywhere that there's a good amount of cool shade and leaf litter for them to bury down in. You'll even sometimes find box turtles hidden underneath logs. Now, a painted turtle or a snapping turtle, a spotted turtle, a blanding turtle, all of those species spend the majority of their life in water. Box turtles will go into the water, but oftentimes it's just to cool down or sometimes to actually relieve their bowels so they can go to the bathroom. So if you ever see a box turtle, don't place it into deep water. They do not have webbed toes, so they can't swim and can actually drown. Now, one question that I do oftentimes get is, can turtles walk out of their shells and then move into another shell as they're growing and getting bigger? No, they cannot. No turtle species actually leaves its shell. The box turtle specifically is unique in that the way that its shell grows over time, the scutes, which are these little protective coverings on the back of the carapace, grow with the turtle over time. Now, a species like a painted turtle, as it grows, those scutes shed off and then continue to grow underneath. But the box turtle keeps its scutes its entire life. And you may be looking at the shell thinking to yourself, well, it's just bone, right? It's solid. The turtle doesn't have any feeling in that shell. No, that is not the case. The carapace is actually very vascular, so it can feel touch. It can feel heat. And if the carapace is injured, it does feel that pain. The other thing that's unique is that the spinal column is actually fused inside the back of the carapace and all of the bone structure is encased within that protective armor. This is a very old turtle, a grandfather of the forest, and they can live close to 100 years in age, especially if they're in captivity. And as long as this turtle can avoid predators and avoid things like roadways, it has the chance to live to nearly a century in age. 
But that is the biggest threat a reptile like this faces here in West Virginia. A man-made structure like a road is the true danger that an elderly turtle like this faces. So the next time you cross a road, either do it quickly or try to find an area where you don't have to cross it all. Sound good? Well, how cool is this? Saving a number of different box turtles off of the roads here in West Virginia and getting the chance to admire this very handsome turtle. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Well, that's one more box turtle safe off of the road and into a nice, dense, forested area. Okay, little guy, you be safe out there. A turtle is very unlikely to survive the weight and powerful impact of a motor vehicle tire. And as stewards of this planet, we have a responsibility to look out for these friendly reptiles, especially when they are trying to cross roadways. Turtle saving is a hobby, but don't forget that safety for yourself and other motorists is always the first priority. The world is a better place because of turtles, and with each one saved, there's a bright future for the next generation of these incredible reptiles.